Thank you, Brother Roger. Let me ask you to open your Bibles with me, please, to 1 Chronicles chapter 29. 1 Chronicles chapter 29. While you're turning there, let me ask you a question. Have you ever had anybody come up to you and say, why do you go to church? Why do you go up there and support that church that you go to? Why do you give your hard-earned money to a church? Why, why do you participate in giving to a ministry? Uh, you know, like we're supporting Samaritan's Purse in the, in the Christmas uh, box ministry. Have you ever had anybody, why do you do that? You know, many people would tell you, I, I wouldn't waste my money like this. All you're going to do is give your money up there. And, and you know, some preacher's going to take your money and try to get rich, you know, and buy a big new house and maybe buy an airplane to go around the country. You know, that's what most of us do, right? Yeah. Uh, that's what a lot of people think, you know. They, they say, well, all those preachers just in it for the money. You know, and I'm one of the few preachers I know in the world that will admit that I started preaching for the money. Because I had a job lined up with the FBI. I was going to graduate with a law enforcement degree from Hardin Simmons University. I already had a job lined up with the FBI. And back then, this was like 1969-70. You know, the starting salary was going to be like 30, 32,000 a year. That's pretty good pay back then. And uh, but then God put me in the ministry. And they offered me the position as pastor at College View Baptist Church in Abilene, Texas, and offered to pay me $20 a week. And I couldn't turn down the money. I started preaching for the money, $20 a week, at College View Baptist Church. Now, I've, I've gotten up a little higher than that since then, uh, but I never had a great, great salary. You know, I... I just to be honest with you, I never made over $50,000 a year anywhere I was ever pastor, ever, ever preached. I, I never made over $50,000 a year. Uh, the most I was ever paid was when I had my own evangelistic association, paid myself. I was so greedy, that's when I made the most money. But, uh, you know, if people tell you that, don't, don't listen to that nonsense. If they ask you, why do you support your church? Why do you give money to the church? Just tell them, because I believe it's the right thing to do to support the Lord's work. So the question is, why give to the Lord's work? Now, we're going to answer that question scripturally this morning in 1 Chronicles 29. Here's what it says, beginning in verse 9. Then the people rejoiced, for they offered willingly... Because with perfect heart they offered willingly to the Lord. And David the king also rejoiced with great joy. Wherefore David blessed the Lord before all the congregation. And David said, Blessed be thou, Lord God of Israel, our Father, forever and ever. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. For all that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom. O Lord, Thou art, ex art exalted as head above all. Both riches and honor come of Thee, and Thou reignest over all, and in Thine hand is power and might, and in Thine hand it is to make great and to give strength unto all. Now therefore, O God, we thank Thee and praise Thy glorious name. But who am I, and what is my people that we should be able to offer so willingly after this sort? For all things come of thee, and of thine own have we given thee. For we are strangers before thee, and sojourners, as were all our fathers. Our days on the earth are as a shadow, and there is none abiding. O Lord our God, all this store that we have prepared to build, the and house for thine holy name, cometh of thine hand, and is all thine own. I know also, my God, that thou triest the heart and hast pleasure in uprightness. As for me in the uprightness of mine heart, I have willingly offered all these things, and now have I seen with joy thy people which are present here to offer willingly unto thee. Why give to the Lord's work? First of all, because of the joy it can bring you. How many of you believe it's a joy to give to the Lord's work? You know, the Bible says the Lord loveth a cheerful giver. Do you know who a cheerful giver is? Actually, in the Greek, the word there is the word translated hilarious. 
God loves an hilarious giver. Somebody just has a, almost a, a glorified spell because they get to give to the Lord's work. You know, I had a preacher friend that they had a little boy. They were trying to teach him, you know, about the principles of God's word. And they were trying to teach him uh, that it's more blessed to give than to receive. But every time he got it backwards, he always said, no, it's more blessed to receive than it is to give. Well, you know, there's a lot of adults that are the same way. Amen. <laughs> They think it's more blessed to receive than it is to give. But Jesus said it's more blessed to give than to receive. We ought to give with a willing, joyful heart when it comes to giving to the Lord's work. It ought to bring us joy in our heart to give to the Lord's work because of the joy that it can bring you. The Lord loveth the cheerful giver. Look down, down in verse 17. It said, Now have I seen with joy thy people which are present here to offer willing unto thee. It ought to be a joyful thing to give to the Lord. Why give to the Lord's work? Secondly, because your heart is right with God. You give to the Lord's work because your heart is right with God. Now how does your heart become right with God? What has to happen for your and my heart to become right with God? What has to happen? You have to have Jesus in your life. Amen. You have to trust Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Only then can you have a right heart toward God. If Jesus becomes your Lord and Savior, you'll have a heart that wants to give to the Lord's work. You'll have a heart that will bring you joy to be able to give and support the Lord's work. You, your heart must be right with God. You know, the Bible says in the New Testament, where a man's treasure is, there will his heart be also. You ever think about that? Where a man's treasure is, there will his heart be also. Do you have a right heart toward God? If you do, you'll give. You know, you can't tell everything about a person by what they do with their money. But I'll guarantee you, you show me anybody's checkbook receipts and I'll show you where their heart is. What they give the most to is what they care about the most. If your checkbook has more checks given to, to glorify your own pleasure, your, your own greed instead of giving to the Lord's work, it says something about a person. Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Where's your heart? It tells a lot about where you give your money. And to give to the Lord's work means that your heart is right with God. Why give to the Lord's work? Thirdly, because it's all His to start with. Amen? It's all His to start with. Look, look, look at, look at uh, verse number 11. All that is in the heaven and in the earth is Thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and Thou art exalted as head above all. Both riches and honor come of Thee. Thou reignest over all. God, it, it all belongs to the Lord. I heard one preacher say one time, said, you know, the Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. He said, not, not only is the earth the Lord, all the hills on the earth the Lord, and all the bugs, all, all the taters in the hills, and all the bugs on the taters are God's. <laughs> Everything belongs to the Lord. It's all His. He created it all. And by the way, we don't give to the Lord's work because He's broke and on welfare and needs our money. I mean, he owns it all already. Well, why do we need to give to the Lord's work if he already owns it all? Because we need to be right in our heart. Our heart needs to be right with God. And when our heart is right with God, we have a willing, giving spirit. Why give to the Lord's work? Because of the joy it can bring you? Because your heart is right with God? Because it's all his to start with. And fourthly, because only he has the power to strengthen you. Only he has the power to strengthen you. Look at verse 12. 
Both riches and honor come of thee, and thou reignest over all, and in thine hand is power and might. And listen to this. In thine hand it is to make great and to give strength unto all. Where do you believe your health and strength comes from? Because you have a special diet? Because you eat the right things and don't eat the wrong things? Where does your health and strength come from? There's only one place it comes from, and that's from Him. Whatever health and strength you've got, you need to be grateful to God for, and you need to thank God and glorify God for the health and strength that you have. We were kind of kidding about it this morning, about us that are older, you know, our ages. But still, it's the truth. If I get up every morning and I'm above ground walking, I feel like I'm ahead of the game. I'm grateful to God for every day of life that God gives me. There were many times in my life that I should have died. And God preserved my life. Why? Because He's a wonderful, loving, heavenly Father. And He watches over and protects His children. He works in marvelous and miraculous ways to preserve our life and to give us opportunity to serve Him and love Him and give to the Lord's work. He loves us. That's why He does what He does for us. Amen? Only He has the power to strengthen you. You don't live and move and have your being because you're a strong person. Get right down to it, folks. Let's admit it. We're all pretty well weak. We're all pretty well a bunch of weaklings. We can't do much on our own. In fact, Jesus said, I'm the vine, you're the branches. Without me, you can do what? Nothing. 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 When we get to think that we're big, strong, powerful, everything, we can do this, we can do that, watch out. Because God's love to show you, no, that's not where it is. Where it is is dependence upon Him. Dependence upon Him. Why? Because only He has the power to strengthen you and give you the strength you need to live day in and day out. Why give to the Lord's work? Because of the joy it can bring you? Because your heart is right with God? Because it's all His to start with. Because only He has the power to strengthen you. And fifth and finally, because it gives God pleasure. It gives God pleasure. It is pleasing to Him. Question. Are you more interested in pleasing man or pleasing God? Paul said if we yet please men, we'd not be the servants of Christ. Paul said, do we seek to persuade men or God? If we yet please men, we'd not be the servants of Jesus Christ. We're to be God pleasers, not men pleasers. So many people are trying to please and appease other people instead of worrying about what God thinks. Quit listening to the politicians and start listening to God. Amen? <laughs> it gives God pleasure. How do we know that? Look at verse 17. Verse 17, I know also, my God, that thou triest the heart. The Bible says in another place, if you remember, God, a, a man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. Amen. Man looks at the outward appearance. We all want to look good. You know, we want to look as good as we can. I had to go to the dermatologist this past week on Wednesday. If you've never had a trip to the dermatologist, you've missed a real blessing. I mean, I had a little place on my nose that they said was cancerous. And uh, the first thing they did was stick a needle in my nose. Now, if you've never had a needle stuck in your nose, you've missed a blessing of life. And they stuck a needle in my nose and, and biopsied that little cancer. And uh, then after that, she starts looking all over my face, asked me to take my shirt and undershirt off, looked all over everywhere, looked all over my face and said, you've got a free, few little precancerous places here. We're going to freeze those off. How many of you ever had that freezing instrument come at you? To me, that was worse than the needle. She start, took this freezing instrument and started freezing stuff all over my face. That's why I look so ugly this morning. I mean, I've got splotches all over my face where they froze these precancerous things off. And, and, and I, I came out there and looked in the mirror after a while and thought, well, you look like a freak. 
Yeah. What, how did I get off on that? Oh, it gives you pleasure. Oh, because he said uh, in verse 17, I know also, my God, that thou triest the heart and hast pleasure in uprightness. As for me, in the uprightness of my heart, I have willingly offered all these things. And now have I seen with joy thy people which are present here to offer willingly unto thee. It gives God pleasure. He has pleasure in uprightness. He has pleasure in those that give to the Lord's work. Again, do you want to please men or please God? If you want to please God, be a good, cheerful giver. And if you give willingly and, and, and generously to the Lord's work, I'll guarantee you God's going to bless you. Let, let me propose a contest to you or a question. Do you think, now I want to put your thinking cap on a minute. Do you think your paycheck will go further 100% 100% of your paycheck do you think it would go further under a curse or under God's blessing we're getting down to 10% and 90% you understand that right 10% is a tithe right do you think we're supposed to tithe? Yes. Bible says so. Bible says in Malachi 3, bring you all the tithes in the storehouse that my house may be full. And, and another place it says that you've robbed God. You've robbed God in tithes and offerings. In other words, you can be the strictest tither in the world. You can tithe 10% and be strict down to the penny. But if you don't give offerings over and above your tithe, according to the Bible, you're still robbing God. I mean, that's the whole context of Malachi 3. It started, will a man rob God? W will you rob God? Well, how would you rob him? He said in tithes and offerings. So we give a tithe to the Lord. Do you think that 90% of your paycheck, 90% of your income, blessed of God, will go further than 100% under a curse? Because the Bible says if you don't give tithes and offerings to the Lord, it's a curse. You're, you're under a curse. So my, my philosophy is I'm going to give at least, I'm going to give at least, at the very least, 10% of my income to the Lord's work. Because I don't want my, my paycheck, I don't want my salary under a curse. I want it under the blessings of God. And 90% blessed of God of any amount of money, I challenge you, will go further than 100% not blessed of God under a curse, according to God's Word. Why give to the Lord's work? Because of the joy it can bring you. Because your heart's right with God. Because it's all His to start with. Because only He has the power to strengthen you. And because it gives God pleasure. God, ple God is pleased when we contribute to the Lord's work. God is pleased when we give with a cheerful heart. God is pleased when we tithe of our income and give offerings over and above our tithe. That pleases God. So if you're more interested in pleasing God than you are pleasing man, it can start with your giving. Doesn't end there. Doesn't end there at all. But it can start with your giving. Give to the Lord's work and you'll be blessed of the Lord. Amen. Let's stand together.